Hello Fiber Friends! We are here today to answer a question that gets asked quite a lot in the spinning community and that question is, should I let my bobbins rest before I ply my yarn? So I want you to tell me, what do you do? What are your thoughts about this? Do you let your bobbins rest before you ply your yarn or do you just finish that bobbin and then off to ply <laughs> with it and you ply it right away? What do you do? I'm curious because I have some thoughts about this but I think this is definitely one of those what works for you kind of situations and what works for me may not work for everyone else so I would really love to hear your thoughts about this. What we're going to do today is ply some yarn. I spun this yarn in the Canadian production wheel video so I will put a link to that if you want to see the actual spinning of this yarn and I have let it rest for a couple of months now which on the one hand sounds like a really long time but on the other hand I know that I've had projects that I've put aside for a while and then come back to so I don't think it's an unreasonable amount of time. I think that frequently things get put to the side and maybe they do sit for a few months. But regardless of that, I am sure that this yarn has had time to rest. I'll be using my Ashford e-spinner to ply this. I really like plying with this because I get a lot of twist really fast. And this is a very thin yarn and it has a lot of twist in it. That's part of why I chose to use this yarn for this experiment because it's a high twist yarn. I'm really curious about where the wisdom or advice, I guess, if you will, to let your bobbins rest came from. I've had trouble finding a source of this information. What I do see a lot of is people online saying, I don't let my bobbins rest and it's fine. So, I'm curious about this. Where did it come from? Because it's, it's interesting in spinning. I think there are a lot of things that would have been taught and passed down from generation to generation of people doing this craft that would have been learned through a lot of observation and experience and there is a difference in approaching something out of a need for survival and coming to something as a craft. So this might be a rabbit hole. <laughs> this is probably... <laughs> Let's consider some reasons why we would want to let our yarn rest. Well, the number one thing that comes to my mind is that when yarn has a lot of energy in it, it's difficult to manage when you're plying, you get those pigtails and it kind of <laughs> wants to go all over the place. And it's difficult to control that to get it into a nice plied yarn. And so one of the reasons to let the yarn rest is to let that energy relax. But as soon as it would get wet or damp, it's going to it's going to perk back up. We're going to get that energy back. And so one of the reasons why people don't like to let their yarn rest is because they say, "Oh, it's dead and lifeless. It's just limp. It, the energy is you can't see it anymore." And so how do you know if you're getting a good ply? If the if you can't if you can't feel that energy in it, how do you know? Well, let's get it wet. I know this isn't exactly a scientific experiment because I don't actually have a control. I should have some fresh spun yarn of the same type if I was going to actually have a control. Uh, so I'm just going to clip off a bit here that I don't get wet and we'll be able to see how much re-wetting the yarn brings back the twist. So let's compare these two. Maybe there won't even be a difference. I don't know. But I'm going to let this rest for just a few minutes and then I'll come back and press the water out and let's compare the dry natural twist with the re-wetted, hopefully re-energized twist and see what they look like. Yep. They're, oh, he's <laughs> grabbing his friend there. Oh, I hope I got it on the camera. Yeah, it is definitely twisting. I had let it come to a relaxed place 
before I put it in the water. And now that I've taken it out of the water, it's, it's really twisting a lot. Like it's going nuts. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it was definitely energized and moving and trying to get to a position of a, a neutral twist where it didn't have all that energy holding it back. So clearly getting it wet reactivated all of that twist. So that goes to show you cannot hide the twist of your yarn if it's there. As soon as you get it wet to block it or to wash the yarn or any of those kinds of activities we do with the yarn, it's going to show us what twist is really in those fibers. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. I have this spin control card from Dreaming Robots. It came from, it came with my Eel Wheel Nano. I've put both these yarns on here to get an idea of what the twist angles look like. Now this one on the right is the dry yarn and the one on the left is the re-wetted and uh, re-energized energy revealed yarn. I am surprised actually by how much difference there is between the two. The dry yarn is almost relaxed at a 20 degree angle of twist, but the re-wetted yarn is much higher. It's pushing into the 40 degree angle. So I'm really excited because I went into this knowing conceptually there should be a difference and there really actually is a visible difference. And that's really exciting to me because there's a point to the video. <laughs> we can see it it's right there it does make a difference resting your yarn and you can perk that twist back up it's revealed if we dunk it in water so what this means is that while I'm plying now I have a sample that I can keep with me as I'm plying there is of course a trick that many spinners will do while while plying, which is to pull the yarn out of the wheel, let it dangle, and see if that loops up on itself or if it kind of hangs at a neutral twist energy. The thing is, if you've had your yarn resting and you're plying and you try that trick, it's going to give you that dry, rested twist angle, which as we saw here was closer to 20 degrees almost. Not that almost 40 degrees where it actually is. So re-wetting your yarn to see what the twist angle should be and then using that as your sample to keep next to you to look at while you ply is probably a better and more accurate gauge of what your twist should be like as opposed to just letting it dangle to see if it twists up on itself. So I'm going to use my re-wetted sample and now I am going to ply this yarn. I want to see what the experience is like. So I will be using this Lazy Kate, which is not tensioned. Nobody likes the yarn barf that can come from an overspinning bobbin. That's a mess and it tangles, especially when it has all that energy in it. So we're not going to hold it back. We're going to let it yarn barf if it wants to yarn barf, <laughs> which hurts, <laughs> hurts me to say, but that's what we're going to do. Um, and I'm just going to get plying and I will use the wetted yarn as my sample. And I'm taking a look. It feels, see when I let it dangle, it's definitely curling up on itself and it's showing me that there's a lot of energy within it. Um, but I think I want that energy there because that is going to be the energy that vanishes after we get it wet. And guess what? I'm looking at it on here and it's actually not even enough energy. So I'm gonna turn up the RPMs on this. There we go. Whoo! <laughs> So let's check it again. It's definitely curling up all over the place. I have pigtails everywhere, but let's see. It's a little bit hard to see on the card, but I think I'm between the 30 and the 40 degree angle of twist. So I'm going to compare it to my sample here. It's a little bit more twist than what my sample has by a little bit, but I just fired it up to full blast on my RPM. So I'm going to apply a little bit like this and then check it again. <laughs> I'm grabbing it to stop 
it because I don't want it to add more twist. I need that snapshot of time right here. So I'm gonna back this up a bit and see how we compare. And that's it. That's where I want it to be. It's time to check in. I've been spinning plying for a little bit here and something really cool is happening. I haven't had any yarn barf. I also haven't had that thing that frequently happens to me when I ply right away, uh, which is where it starts to do kind of, there it is. <laughs> is it? Okay. No, nope, it's, it's not even doing that. It's so easy. Even if it um, starts to twist up on itself it's so easy to just give it a little pull and it all straightens out just like that that's amazing so I'll admit I tend to ply immediately I tend to be one of those people that finishes a bobbin and goes right to the plying and this is actually giving me a couple of thoughts number one when I do that how long has the first bobbin been sitting because if I spin a bobbin and then the other bobbin is fresh off the wheel, I have one that has relaxed twist in it and one that has fresher twist in it. Or if I work on it and then I wait till the next weekend to finish it up and then I go straight to plying, that twist might be a little more apparent at the most recently spun section of that bobbin. And so in that case, I think it is making some sense to let the bobbins rest. Also, I'm having such an easier time. It's not getting all tangled up and I haven't had any yarn barf and if it does spin a little extra and come off the bobbin, it doesn't um, latch onto itself in those pigtail things or onto the yarn next to it or anything. I haven't had any tangles or where it gets stuck together. I really, honestly, I wasn't expecting it to make that much of a difference, but really going at this in a let's observe what's going on here in a more mindful kind of pay attention way, I'm definitely seeing that there are some serious advantages to letting the yarn rest. Let me know your thoughts. Is this giving you any thoughts? I don't know, but I'm going to keep plying because this is a very enjoyable experience right now, plying this yarn, where I feel like usually if I spun this up in a couple days and plied it right away, I feel like this would be one of those plies that would be a frustrating experience <laughs> because of just all the energy out of control, like herding cats or goats that um, want to be in the other pasture. <laughs> you have to bring out the good grain to get them in line. Okay, um, shake a bucket. If you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> you know. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna keep plying, but I'm, I'm enjoying this. This is a good time. Here is my lovely plied yarn and I was able to get all of it into a this is, this is really pretty. I plan to weave with this yarn. I can't wait to weave with this yarn. It's really so pretty. But we all know what we have to do next, right? We have to wash this yarn and that will bring the twist back. And I think that will be sort of the test to see if it's really overspun or if all of that twist energy was relaxed the water brings it back and we end up with something balanced because right now it does feel very energized so let's get it in some water and wash this yarn up
but this is folded over and let to relax to its natural state after resting and not being re-wetted. And this is what was spun after resting, but to a twist angle that matched the re-wetted yarn. And this yarn is just happy. <laughs> it's bouncy. It has some um, life to it. This yarn just feels kind of blah and limp and I don't like it. If if this if this whole skein turned out like this one, I would be very disappointed. But it didn't. I'll just throw that over there. <laughs> this yarn came out beautiful and oh, it's great. I love it. I love the way it looks. I love the colors and the twist angle. It's just a very satisfying yarn to look at. So let me know, what do you do? Do you let your yarn rest? Do you ply it right away? I would love to hear if you're gonna try anything different after watching this video, or if you just have to clear that bobbin and get to the next project and you just ply, ply, ply as soon as you can. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed this. I did. Happy spinning. <laughs>